90% of diagnoses for high blood pressure are called essential hypertension. We basically have no idea what's going on. The modern media tells us salt is to blame, and there is some truth to that, but sugar is likely the main culprit. When you consume salt, that salt holds on to water. Blood volume expands, contributing to a rise in blood pressure, unless you can remove said sodium. The way to remove the sodium is to get enough corresponding potassium, and most people on a standard American diet are getting adequate sodium and potassium. There is just dysfunction resulting in improper metabolism. The raw primal dieters, Ajanis von der Planets, aka the raw tards, are usually not getting enough salt, whereas the carnivores, grind food, are using too much salt. You have to find the happy medium. I'll link some videos on potassium at the end here. So the real problem is a high sugar, high inflammatory diet. Keep in mind, you know, sugar is always pinned as the bad guy. Glucose, fructose, not necessarily that bad. But when you combine it with high omega-6, processed foods, refined foods, and a lack of animal vitamins, you have uh, the big bad skull, bad stuff happens. When omega-6 is high, particularly linoleic acid, sugar can damage many organ systems in the body, including the adrenals, the pancreas, kidneys, you know, arterial lining, resulting in degenerative diseases. You know, there's a reason Italians have been eating tons and tons of pasta for thousands of years without issues until now. Many of these organs, which are now inflamed, play a role in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, a hormone system that regulates blood pressure, fluid and electrolyte balance, as well as vascular health. Dietary and lifestyle stress result in the dysfunction of this system. So you have renin, which is an enzyme that activates angiotensin. Angiotensin is a hormone that promotes vasoconstriction, so the constricting of the blood vessels, and that means less room for blood to flow, which can increase blood pressure if it's not regulated properly, as well as aldosterone production. Aldosterone being the main mineral corticoid that regulates sodium. Mineral corticoids being hormones produced by the adrenals. The sugar plays in by causing high insulin. So you have a poor diet that's inflammatory, omega-6 seed oils, processed foods, you end up with high insulin. High insulin causes high renin. High renin results in high angiotensin, results in increased vasoconstriction, the blood vessels tighten up, the body is signaled to release aldosterone. And the main function of aldosterone is to work on the kidney to increase sodium and water absorption, which can obviously increase blood pressure in too high of an amount, because if you're absorbing all of this sodium and water, your blood volume increases substantially, and you know your body is only meant to handle so much blood. High aldosterone also signals the kidneys to excrete too much potassium, possibly why the standard American diet recommends so much potassium. It's trying to make up for the high insulin levels. One other thing that activates the overproduction of these adrenal hormones is extra uric acid. This relates back to sugar, as one component of sugar is fructose, and part of fructose metabolism is you know, producing uric acid. So fructose in high amounts equals high uric acid equals high adrenal hormones, resulting in high blood pressure, hypertension. The genetic ability to handle uric acid makes a significant difference here. And by no means does it mean, oh, if I consume too much sugar, will I have high uric acid. You know, potassium and vitamin C play huge preventative roles in uric acid metabolism going ori. And this is where salt can actually be a problem. The inflammation in your kidneys as a result of insulin resistance makes it so you cannot handle salt as well. This is why we see people getting high blood pressure from consuming too much salt. Fix the insulin resistance, then you can handle salt. I've seen quite a few carnivores recommending upwards of 10 grams of salt per day. That is way too much for most people and dangerous to certain individuals, especially those with impaired liver, kidney, any type of organ problems whatsoever. Overproduction of other adrenal hormones causes high blood pressure as well. Cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, each of these have different mechanisms that can cause high blood pressure individually, uh, sometimes referred to as Cushing syndrome, uh, specifically when you have too much cortisol. One really interesting thing is that heart disease is likely not possible 
unless you have high blood pressure because that blood flowing rapidly causes small tears in the arterial wall. Those tears can accumulate substances such as oxidized cholesterol from a high omega-6 diet. That forms an enlargement or a burst, you know, resulting in a full-on cardiac event. So to prevent this, you can improve the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in your diet. You know, omega-3 has blood flow promoting activities. You know, the blood flows smoother. The platelets are more flexible, whereas omega-6 does the opposite. It causes damage. It makes things rigid. Uh, vitamin D and vitamin K certainly play a role. And there's many studies, you know, affiliating, you know, vitamin D or vitamin K supplementation with lowering blood pressure. And the mechanism here could be due to the metabolism of calcium being dependent on these vitamins. And if one was deficient in vitamin D or vitamin K, calcium is deposited in various soft tissues, including organs, arteries, contributing to inflammation and chronic disease. Uh, so definitely some links to calcium metabolism that would explain lowered organ function resulting in high blood pressure. Uh, for those of you that haven't really looked into vitamin D metabolism, heavily involves the kidneys as that is where calcium is either signaled to be excreted or absorbed. So uh, to just briefly go over how to fix high blood pressure, uh, obviously you want to exercise, uh, you want to improve your lean body mass uh, to remove the potential for insulin resistance. Uh, you want to avoid calcification, as we just said. Get plenty of sun, high vitamin K2, fermented animal foods. Uh, we said avoid omega-6, linoleic acid, seed oils. And, of course, you want to consume mostly saturated fats as well as some omega-3 fats. If exercise, diet, nutrition do not fix this issue, you need to address EMF, electromagnetic frequencies, causing cellular stress, as well as possible medications you're taking. And who knows, you could have passed heavy metal toxicity or organ dysfunction that is, is resulting in some type of organ not working properly in this process. What's crazy is, you know, a doctor might be able to tell you all of this stuff and then they'll say, oh, let's remove your adrenal gland because it's not working properly instead of actually, you know, addressing what the issue is. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out. I put a lot of work and effort into my videos. Unfortunately, I'm still filming these in my apartment. You know, if you guys could share the video, subscribe, like, you know, support me further. Hopefully I can, you know, really increase the production value, you know, invest some more money into a studio, into things like that so that, you know, not only are you guys getting this good information, it's a more approachable setup and um, it's more enjoyable for both of us. So if you guys would like to support me further outside of promoting the YouTube channel, you can check out my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, where I go over, you know, basic principles that would help you improve, you know, your hypertension, your high blood pressure, Frankie's free range meat for quality animal foods, Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. And if you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to frank-defano.com. Thanks again for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.